We start with a point. Hi, it's Rob Bryanton, and welcome back once again. Uh, we've been doing these floating head videos. They're doing something a little different this time. Jason's got me as a point-like particle, which is what uh, science defines an electron as. And this is part of a series of blogs we're doing discussing uh, poll questions that have been happening at the Imagining the Tenth Dimension blog, which you can go to anytime just by going to tenthdimension.com slash blog. And uh, there's always a, a couple of polls uh, running there for you to be able to answer uh, new questions on. Should be some there right now. Uh, poll 29's question was, an electron is a point-like particle. This means, just like the point we start the 10th dimension visualization with, an electron is of no size, no dimension. And 41% agreed, while 58% disagreed. Now this poll question relates to some blog entries that were published around the same time. We start with a point, a point within the Omniverse, and Elvis and the Electrons. And if you're reading along uh, with this blog entry, I provide a link to a Wikipedia article on electrons. As it says in the article, electrons are believed to be point particles with no apparent substructure. They are identical particles that belong to the first generation of the lepton particle family. So, all electrons are identical, and all electrons are point particles. Here's the first couple of sentences from the Wikipedia article on point particles, then. A point particle, or point-like particle, often spelled point-like uh, without a hyphen in it, just one word, point-like particle, is an idealized object heavily used in physics. Its defining feature is that it lacks spatial extension. Being zero-dimensional, it does not take up space. So, when we're looking at the poll results here, thinking of an electron as having no size and being zero-dimensional is the correct approach as far as the modern physics is concerned. And yet, conceiving of an electron in those terms is not an easy thing for us to wrap our heads around. And as 58% of the people responding to this poll showed us. My animation, which has now been seen by millions of people around the world, starts with these five words. We start with a point. Building one idea upon another, we end up with a way to visualize all aspects of reality as contained within the ten dimensions. A mind-blowing journey that makes people want to watch this animation over and over again. When author David J. Brown called my book brilliantly conceived and mind-stretching, he was celebrating the large cloud of ideas that spring from the starting point of this way of visualizing reality. Here in this blog and video blog, there are a great many tangents that we've explored, all of them stemming from the point of indeterminate size that the original animation both begins and ends with. Envisioning that the entire universe really contains only one electron, then, a fanciful idea from celebrated physicist Richard Feynman, which we discussed most recently in Poll 27, requires us to stretch our minds even further. And, as we just discussed in Poll 28, stacking on top of that the idea that our perceived reality is being created through the pattern recognition powers of our minds, builds a conceptual tower which some are still not willing to climb. To those of you who are not ready to embrace the more out-there notions that this project sometimes gets into, I'm fine with that. At the core of these discussions, though, is what I believe to be an essential truth about the nature of reality, and as each of us come with our preconceived notions and our own experiences which frame our worldview, this project is about ways of showing how we're all connected together. In a very real way, we are like Feynman's single electron, existing simultaneously within a reference frame which is completely outside of time, outside of space. Think of this, the spark that within each of us, that some call consciousness and some call soul or spirit, is like a point-like particle, when perceived within each frame of space-time. But it's also part of a much larger wave function, which exists across timelessness. As I've said before, you are the point. Now, the next blog entry that we're going to be looking at here is a discussion of the poll question 30. And that question was, do you believe in ghosts? 
To finish today's entry, we're going to finish with one of the 26 songs I've written for this project. Uh, this is just me sitting at my old piano in my living room, and the song is called Connections. My name is Rob Bryanton from the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey. Connections in time, connections in space, connections we share with the whole human race. Back to the very first chemical chains that started it all. Hi friends, just a reminder that you can now buy a 6 DVD set of my video blogs at 10thdimension.com slash store.